Welcome to episode four of the TV Autopsy, slicing its way through the series you love. My name is James. My name is Deborah. And I'm Megan. Wow. Hello, ladies. It seems like it's been a very long time. Very long time. It feels like a good couple of months. I know. We we had a period when it was like we're all it, it seemed like we were together all the time and then and then just kind of I blame away. my broadband provider. I had technical limitations for but also the nearly football. a month. Oh, yes. The Nervous football. football. Did you, no, I didn't watch any of it. Was it any good? <gasps> yes, it was fun. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> All the drama there in a nutshell. <laughs> we can't review anything on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, what's been going on in your worlds? Well, I have news. Oh, go on. My news is... We've got a puppy! Oh, well, it, she's a rehomer, so she's um, nearly seven months. She oh. was, uh, the, the previous owners, uh, she was a lockdown purchase, and uh, they realised that they didn't have any time for her. Oh. So uh, they clearly loved her very much, but just... Well, not that much. But just didn't feel, uh, you know, they had to go back to work and all that sort of stuff. So she's ours now. She's a cross cocker setter, black... Oh. Nice. She's um, she's a, a little minx. She's lovely. Where is she now? I don't know where she is at the moment. But she um, she needs an awful lot of training because she had no training whatsoever in, uh, for these I mean, first seven months of her life. Yeah, I, I, I find it very hard to get my head around how people cannot understand when they get a puppy the commitment that goes into having a, a dog. You know, and you know, yeah. we, when we were growing up, it was always, you know, a dog is for life, not just for Christmas, wasn't it? All those adverts. I can never understand that either. It's like, how can, when you've got a dog, you just, well, I just fall in love with them. You know, mm. how can, you could then just get They're such it. a big, they are a really big commitment, aren't they? And I think an awful lot of people just didn't think through the consequences of the other end of lockdown. Um, so I'm very glad that there's people like you, yeah, we'll Deborah, to a long pick up the time. pieces. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Aww. Now, Megan, have you got any dog news? Um, well, I believe that uh, the lovely Graham Hall is filming his new series of dogs behaving very badly, and um, my very badly behaved dogs will not be making an appearance. <sighs> oh. No. Oh, well, um, yeah, uh, and Jolene broke her. Um, we we made it to 151 days without veterinary intervention, and then she managed to uh, break that record. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> what what was that? Do, do you count the day? <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Well, is she okay? What happened? She's um, absolutely fine. She got a tick right on the end of her snoz, and I oh couldn't no. get. I couldn't get it. I oh, couldn't you, get it off. Well, a little, a little, a little tip for you. Um, just get a lighter. And you just burn it. Uh, burn burn her nose. I'm not no, you just going burn anywhere the near her. And it pops off. There you go. Learn oh, that nice. from my Camp America days in Maine, America, USA. It's everywhere, even though I didn't get any. <laughs> All right. Shall we? Um, have we got any TV news? <laughs> I've got a little bit. Not um. Go on. So, in, I don't know if any of you watch The Sopranos, but there's a spin-off show coming from The Sopranos called The Merry Saints of Newark. Um, and then it just got me kind of thinking about uh, that. I heard, you know, I was reading today about the House of the Dragon Game of Thrones spin-off. Yes, I've been asked me in that. I, I think I shared <gasps> that with you, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to ask you to what a what are your thoughts on spin-offs? Um, you know, is it kind of a watered down version? Are they ever any good? Um, are they ever any better? Um, and what are your thoughts about these upcoming ones, really? I I would be interested in watching the uh, the Game of Thrones spin off, um, uh, because it is such a big world that he wrote about, and um, and he thought about all the kind of history and the legacy stuff beforehand. So I'm interested to see what there is and what what it's about. I mean, uh, he. Does, so I'm, 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 I suppose we should just mention that writing for him in certainly in the past tense, because this last book has taken him about eight years. Yeah, bless, yeah, yeah. bless him. He's he's obviously enjoying. He goes to all the conventions and everything, doesn't he? And he's he's I mean, allowed. He doesn't actually owe us anything. I mean, he doesn't. He's not obligated to write 
um, and fulfil our own desires to see the uh, stories play out. Although probably by book eight, he's got a bit of a moral obligation. I think there's lots of <laughs> furious Game of Thrones fans who would disagree with you there. But have, have, have you either of you read the books, by the way? Yeah, um, I've read the first couple of books, but I not read the old the, books. Yeah, I read the first book and then decided that I was actually just going to fully embrace the TV series and not, and then yeah. not constantly be comparing the two. So yeah, yeah because they do kind of go off in different directions and stuff, and I, I kind of did the same. I, I, I read the first one and then kind of just committed to the TV. But anyway, yeah. so we're making that question to you about spin-offs. About spin-offs. So I'm all up for the spin-offs. I think um, some of them crash and burn fairly quickly, Joey. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but some of them, some of them really do stand the test. And interestingly, we will be, I think, moving on to um, talk a little bit about um, uh, Joss Whedon and Buffy and Angel. Yeah. I thought that those that was an excellent spin-off. Um, Torchwood, you like Torchwood, didn't you, James? Um, well, look, I'm a, I'm a massive Doctor Who fan. And, well, you know, during that time, you know, it, it was off the air for 18 years and went, then it came back with Russell, with the amazing Russell T Davies. And we just had the show and we had the Sarah Jane Adventures, we had Torchwood, we had Confidential, uh, we even had a few cartoons. And um, I just kind of embraced anything that was kind of vaguely Doctor Who. I, I thought the two first two series were quite flawed. Um, very, It was, it was kind of like trying to be a bit... Um, uh, what's it called? Um, the X Files, uh, but with more sex, really. But I thought they really hit the ground running. In they did um, series three, they did it was five episodes, and it was they did it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all in one week. And uh, it's called Children and Men or something. And it was about aliens that were abducting children, and they were using children as their drug. Basically, they were hooking them up to these Ooh. big aliens and just feeding off the and um, that wow great not, concept uh, not dark at I can, all <laughs> i can think of other spin-offs james that you have been in love with over the past like you know Joni and chachi well i was just gonna ask you can, well, and mindy and yeah. <laughs> yeah well i was gonna well i was just about to say can you name the four spin-offs from happy days but you've already named two of them and they're the most difficult ones really okay what were the other two so we had Joni loves chachi yeah Walk and Mindy. Walk and Mindy. Um, it, it was a cartoon with uh, with the time travel, the Fonz and. Uh, oh, the cartoon! Yeah, I loved that. What was it called? What was that called? Ah, oh, I remember it. I don't think I even know it. Yeah. Oh. I, I will insert the theme tune here. We got it all together now, gang. The Fonz. His doggy name. Mr. Cool and the Good Group, one flaky time machine, and a future chick named a Cupcake. <laughs> oh, now the gang got zapped into that time machine, and they're like traveling through time. My, my. They do not dig where that machine is going, but they sure hope to get back to 1957 Milwaukee. Can you dig it? Yeah! There you go. <laughs> so, what was that? Yes. And what was the, the other one, then? No, I, I think... you said there were four. Yeah, I think... Didn't Bonds have his own? No, oh, I know what it is. So Laverne and Shirley were the Fonz's cousins who worked at a bottling factory. Oh, and, uh, well, there you go. Uh, with, it's great. That's a really, really very good. Yeah. far removed spin-off, isn't it? Yeah, nice bit of feminism going on there as well oh. um, for the for the fifties, straight seventies, whatever it was. Yeah. So, oh. There we go, spin-off oh. city. All oh, right, let's. Uh, has anyone I, I did. Ha I have a little, little bit of news. Um, so I don't know if anybody saw season one of um, This Way Up, written by Ashling B. 
No, I've not seen it. Season two is now out um, and it stars herself and Sharon Horgan and their sisters. Yeah. And it's just excellent. So if you've seen season one, you can now catch season two. If you haven't seen season one, hurry up and see it and then you can watch season two. Oh dear, cool. listen, now, we were having a discussion today, the three of us, in, the, in building up to our lovely podcast this, uh, this evening, um, where we were talking about what, what are the acceptable rules for um, trying to slip in extra TV shows away from our format. And it looks like Megan's just done that. Yellow card, well, Megan. was quite clever. It was news. It's news. <laughs> well, well, everything's news. news. <laughs> are, we, uh, are, are we having the, the cutting edge? We certainly segment? are. <laughs> sphere of police work the world of forensic medicine yes so, cutting edge off we go Debra. uh two things time starring stephen graham <laughs> sean bean we can't have two things that are rules go on <laughs> and and call my agent which is really excellent uh, uh, I've, yeah. I've, started, I've started watching that they've now got a uk version so the french version uh is called disposant but translated to uh, 10%, but actually it's called Call My Agent. So everyone's been talking about it. I started watching it. It is fantastic. They've got a UK version, which, to tie in with the, the main theme that we're going to be talking about today, stars Olivia Williams, um, who plays Lady What's-Her-Face. Uh, oh! Uh, Lavinia Bidlow right. in, the, ne- in okay. the Nevers. Right. Good stuff. It's 10% going right, because I'm an agent for somebody, and I charge 50%. <laughs> Well, yeah, ten percent is the usual rate, James. So you are fleecing them. <laughs> that's, that's fine, my mate. Um, Megan, what, what about you? My clean bill of health is. Um, I discovered it this weekend. So had we recorded this previously, I don't know what my clean bill of health would have been. I don't know what your um, clean bill of health is anyway. This is called cutting edge this week. <laughs> why have I got this clean? Did we, why have I got clean bill of health on my little I form? Like clean bill of health as well. I'm eating. Cutting edge, I'm changing this right now. That's, <laughs> I think I've done that before. Um, I just copied and pasted the, the same template, you see. Uh, so um, I've discovered on Netflix, it's it's a, a um, Kardashian-style fake reality docu, whatever, yeah. and it's called This Unorthodox Life. And it focuses on the CEO of the um, Elite World Group, which is um, it's basically about 90% of the world's modelling agencies. And it's the CEO and her family, um, which sounds all a bit, blah, well, yeah, brilliant. Um, except that until eight years ago, she, Julia Hart, who's the um, CEO, was living um, an ultra-Orthodox life as a Hasidic in the Hasidic Jewish community in New York, in um, Monsey, um, and yeah, about eight years ago, she left, um, and with no broader life skills, having been completely subservient to what she considers a fundamentalist um, environment, and she escaped with one of her daughters, and since then, her other daughter and one of her sons has come with her, and her fourth child is still in the community and sort of like spend some time and it is fascinating and really really interesting so this is I'm, based on a true story it's it's it's, 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 it's true it is life it's it's right. kind of like meet the Kardashians. i was gonna i was gonna say i was thinking where's the comedy in this but it's <laughs> not comedy reality, but it's brilliant it's reality tv and it's Ooh. excellent oh, i'm really that. really enjoying it i had to I had to force myself not to stay up until stupid o'clock this morning to watch all of it. So I've got a couple of extra okay. episodes left. And that's that's really Netflix. interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I did something I've never done before, um, which doesn't leave a lot left to the imagination. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, I did that thing on Netflix where it says, let us choose something for you to watch. Yeah. And I did. I thought it was going to be stupid. And it came up with a show called Superstore. And oh yes, I uh, so it's basically it's a it's a sitcom 
uh, based on like a um, Walmart kind of yes. company in America. With America Ferrera, right? Yeah. Uh, I just loved it. I yeah, I, I started it, watching it that. It's yeah. so, fu- it's so funny. But it's I turned like- it off though after a couple of episodes. I, I think I watched about four episodes and went, yeah, I think I've seen the whole thing now. Just oh, it, it really? No, it really does grow and build. Oh, and, does it? And, and the jokes, uh, you've got, you know, you've got, <laughs> there's this character in it called Sandra, uh, who's just, put down and um you know just um bullied basically by the assistant manager every time she talks it's like shut up sandra and then <laughs> then she gets together with a guy who looks just like her and this other woman from work just takes him off her off and him and it's just it's hard to explain but definitely worth a watch so that's my seal um that's my cutting edge there you go very good all right so let's do flatliners Megan, have you got anything that you would not advise us to watch? Yeah. Oh. Sexy Beast. What, the film? No. It's basically a dating show now. And it, the premise is that everyone's just too obsessed with looks. So all of the participants rock up in some kind of weird masked singer type get up. So they've got masks or makeup on dressed up as... I don't know, there's a panda, there's a, an alien, <laughs> there's, right. there's a zombie, and they do a dating, so one person then dates three other people and chooses based on, in inverted commas, their personality. Um, and it's just terrible. They're all in their early 20s. They're as shallow and vapid as you might expect. Yeah. And, oh, it's, they're just... A, it, doesn't matter the fact they're wearing a mask highlights the fact that they're all just obsessed with looks and you know yes. physical all and it's just oh just yeah oh. terrible 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 don't bother and it is a bit like a car crash though now you've explained it i feel like i'm just gonna want to go watch one episode just <laughs> go and watch one go and watch one uh watch the beaver one he he ah. was a very pleasant specimen of uh humankind yeah Okie dokie. Deborah, how about you? Um, well, I haven't seen anything that I haven't wanted to watch over this past couple of months, but no, I can no. I can give you a whole load of things that I've no, watched. No, 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 no. No, I think we, if we don't stick to the rules, yes. no worse than... I can't, don't know what the phrase is, but you know. Yeah. Well, um, and my, my, my one is, I was around at a friend's house the other day and she was watching an episode of Supergirl. So I decided to start watching Supergirl this weekend and I've watched 14 episodes and it's not very good at all, but I can't stop again now. I, I really tried to get into that because my dog, my um, first dog, Rhubarb, and... Um, I don't know where <sighs> this is going to go. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to remember his name. Who's the guy? Who's the guy in it? Um, who plays? Oh, um... oh, I don't know any of the actors' names. But we've got oh, we've got he... Jimmy Olsen. I mean, it's basically he, yeah. He played he played the FBI director in the first season of Homeland. He's an English actor, black guy. Yes, I know who you mean. Um, he plays Jimmy Olsen, I think. David Harewood. David Harewood. Yes. That's his name. Uh, so my dog and his dog used to play together on Tooting Common. Oh, I like and, David oh. Harewood. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I tried to get into it because I've got, you know, my, my dog and his dog are mates. Um, and I've got a massive crush on him. He's lovely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My um, dog plays with his dog on Tooting Common. I, I don't take my dog to Tooting Common. <laughs> My dog Walker does. I'll have to. I'll have to ask. Yeah, his dog Sebby and Rhubarb used to play together, oh. and um, and he was lovely. And so I tried to watch it, and I just could. I I really wanted to fangirl it's, Supergirl, and I couldn't. It's got so many flaws. Um, uh, what, one, it's it's got a very low budget, so all the effects and all the makeup and the designs look hokey. But then the other problem, and I've always. Not with the film, Deborah, because I'm. A, I know we're both big fans of the original Supergirl film, which yeah, is yeah, great. Yeah. But what it seems to do is you just get all the kind of B, um, C-list characters from Superman. So we got like Lois Lane's sister, we got Jimmy Olsen, oh. and all, all this kind of stuff, and then we get all the kind of slightly shit, uh, slightly bad um, villains from Superman. Superman does not seem to have a lot of villains. 
Shall we talk about the misogyny in the superhero world, shall we? <laughs> well, listen, but again, I was try- I'm was i trying to be supportive of that. I mean, I No, no, think... I'm not. That wasn't aimed at you, James. That was aimed no, at the but superhero absolutely. world. And that's kind of one of the reasons. That's the only redeeming feature. You've got the a woman from um, Ali McBeal who plays the head of the media to- company where she works. Calista Flockhart. And, and, you know... Harrison Ford's wife. He's talking about feminism all the time. Are they still together? That's nice. Mm. All right. So, um, that's that. So, um, we're going to move on to our feature, but before we do, which is the Nevers, and Deborah, I'm sure you've got some wonderful facts lined up for us. Uh, But but (laughs) before we do that, we wanted to have a little chat um, and kind of get all our kind of thoughts out about these kind of allegations about Joss Whedon and all this kind of stuff that's going on. Now, before we do start about this, I think we should be careful about what we say and how we say it, because they are allegations at the moment. I have nothing to say. OK, I've got a few things I want to say. I have a lot to say. <laughs> so, um, but, but, but all I, I suppose what I'm saying is let's not get sued. <laughs> Go on, Megan. Yes. So part of the reason why I was leading towards picking the Nevers, because this was my choice, was because I had heard that Joss Whedon was um, uh, involved and was, well, creator. And I have watched and loved so much of his work historically. A massive fan of Buffy the Vampire. If you said to me, what one series should we all collectively go with from the entire history of television, I would have said Buffy the Vampire Slayer. All right. Um, And and then... I've only seen a couple of episodes of Buffy. (gasps) The the writing's superb. So good. I re-watched it all two years ago, every episode of seven seasons. Um, I've seen them all, I just love them. And everything, anything he's done, I've really enjoyed. So you've got Firefly, the ill-fated one season, excellent, excellent Wild West meets uh, meets Star Wars. Um, and uh, Dollhouse. And Dollhouse, Spin-off Avengers. Angel. Yep. Just so good. Uh, uh, did you mention Firefly as well? Yeah, just yeah. then, yeah. Uh, because I bring it, um, that's, um, they're making it into a film finally because there's been such a fan outcry for years about another that. film because they made it into Serenity, didn't they? They made a Serenity film. I heard they're doing something else with it. I've got ah, it. well, so all really good stuff. So naturally, always a bit excited. Um, but as soon as I started looking into it, also then turned out that Joss Whedon had basically exited from the Nevers after the first. Uh, four episodes I think it was yeah. and um, and it, it all a lot of historic um, criticisms and um, of toxic uh, allegations of toxic uh, sets over you know dating all the way back to Buffy had been made and Ray Fisher had basically back in February of this year he had um, on social media he had posted a clip of him singing Joss Whedon's praises saying how excellent he was. Who's Ray Fisher? Ray Fisher was playing Cyborg in The Avengers? Yes, 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 yes. Um, and so he posted a clip of him singing Joss Whedon's praises saying how great he was and then in that post he said I just want to categorically, I'm paraphrasing right now, withdraw every sentiment of this clip. Um, and he was um, announcing that he wasn't going to be part of any subsequent um, releases, that his wow. character, he wasn't going to be playing the character anymore. He um, alleged that there was a really toxic environment, that he had be, he felt that he had been treated, bullied and treated disparagingly and that the character had been dealt with in quite a racist, had, had received a racist um, approach to the way that the character was being handled. And then all of these other people who'd worked at Joss Whedon um, programs started coming out in support. So the Charisma Carpenter, who was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and then Angel came out in support of that. And then a and whole load of other Buffy characters yeah, came out yeah, ca- all, supporting that. that. Sarah Michelle Gellar, um, Amber Benson, um, James Masters, who plays Spike, David Boreanaz, who played Angel, that all came out reinforcing that the environment that that Buffy 
was an and Angel was was really quite toxic. Michelle Tattenberg, who played Buffy's sister, came out on social media saying that as a 35 year old, 20 years later, she now felt able to say it was bad. There was a rule that she wasn't allowed to be left on in, in a room alone with Joss Whedon. His wife had come out with lots of claims about lots of affairs. So there was just this really quite toxic yeah. I mean, environment I've got, coming I've, out. I've got all these things that you're saying. I've got like a list here. And I mean, they're just getting stumped here. It goes on and on. Um, you know, there's a, it's, it's really disturbing. There's a bit, James Masters said that um, he... I remember he backed me up against the wall one day and he was just like, I don't care how popular you are, kids, you're dead. You hear me dead. I mean, you, it's kind of, it's really quite unsettling how someone, you know, with that much responsibility can, can go so far. Yeah. I mean, uh, but it's, he's not the only one that we're hearing about, right? This is all starting to come out of the woodwork. Well, yeah, I mean, over... In, with um, Noel Clark and Yeah, so I was going to say, um, well, Noel, Noel Clark from um, Doctor Who. Um, basically, when they brought the series back in Cardiff, they rented out a whole apartment block or a flat block of flats or something yeah. where all the cast and crew would live, um, um, supporting actors would stay there, and it was a bit like calls a residence from what I hear. It was quite debauched. You know, you had, um, what's his name, um, who played Jack Harkness, uh, Dancing with the Stars guy, um, Dancing got ice. What's the judge for Dancing got ice? Oh. You mean you mean John Barrowman? John yes. Barrowman. So he, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he he would regularly expose his genitals um, to people. Allegedly, that... all alleged. No, he's no. He's, well, actually, uh, he actually did say. He, uh, did, he, did, he, he apologised for that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but it's funny. Five years ago, he was bringing that up at conventions, joking about it. Um, you know, but Noel was. There was some serious, allegedly some serious stuff going on there, and instead, and when these cast members or supporting actors, um, or, uh, you know, visiting actors rather, um, what came and talked about it, they're the ones that got removed from the show. Mm. And as a Doctor Who fan, and has he was, you know, and he just just before all that broke, he had won a BAFTA special BAFTA award for yeah. his services um, to television and film. And he made a brilliant speech. I listened to him on a front row, a whole edition devoted to him. And it's just so disappointing. And for me, it doesn't taint the show, but I'm just wondering how you feel about Buffy now. I mean, does it kind of leave a bad taste in your mouth? Could you separate it enough? I mean, Doctor Who for me, because it's always been transient, it's stronger than you know, one set of people, they're only around for five years and they get a whole new cast and crew in, but... Yeah, it's, it's interesting because... Uh, so, having literally watched it two years ago, still loved it, felt it stood up to the, the humour and the writing stood up. But, but interestingly, having recently read a lot more about... Um, I've read a few articles and, and, and they were drawing some of the criticisms that it, it even received at the time, because he... he he has a lot of strong female characters, but actually, and I think this is probably some when I, some of what I was reading was solidifying some of, the, it. some of the niggles that I had about some of the Buffy stories and and Angel storylines, and and they're they're sort of like yes, he he brings in these strong female characters, but they're He's quite, hiding behind it. Yeah, the, but they're not um, they're not they're not treated particularly. There, there's arguments that all their power comes from trauma. They're not strong in their own right. There's, yeah. there's, 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 you know, terrible things that happen and then they lose their marbles and... Yeah, know, but I've got, ju I just want to say something about that, you know, uh, because nowadays it's, we're very, not very quick, but we're, we're very equipped to put labels on everything. So, you know, we now know what a certain disorder is, for example, borderline personality disorder. But just because you give somebody or something a label doesn't then kind of give that person the excuse to be that, to be the way they are with people. Do you see what I mean? Trauma, for, it's, a, it's not an excuse that trauma in the past. No, Megan's saying about oh, the characters about the character, have trauma. Not him. That, that, oh, no, that no, a, him. a female character in her own right can't just have a Can't superpower. Just be awesome. It has to have been <laughs> yeah. oh, brought upon by, right. by evil something, right. and the patriarchy or whatever. Yeah, right. And, and okay. In, in Angel, he killed off 
three of the biggest female characters they all died in childbirth and there's and there was he wow. had accusations because he rewrote in 2006 he rewrote he, or he wrote a wonder woman script and it came back out more recently and it was it was deeply misogynistic and it centered on it didn't send she was just a prop up for a um, male character can't remember who I'm not really it's not really my scene a lot of the more superhero type mm. stuff but but it was just I think now in hindsight and understanding some of the rumblings that we just wouldn't have heard about as common garden viewers um at the time but but you can kind of like see that there's this there are themes throughout a lot of what he does and and yes love the art hate the artist maybe but it, it it would be interesting to go back and watch it and whether that puts a little bit of a different taste Especially on Especially knowing that these characters are, are actors on set and you're watching these guys on set and yeah. you know what's yeah. been going on behind it. So yeah, Sarah because, Michelle yeah. Geller said um, that when all of this came up, she came out in support of Charisma Carpenter and she said, you know, she would forever be proud to be associated with Buffy Summers, but she did not want to be associated with Joss Whedon. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that powerful thing? Um, yeah, so, so all right, well, let's kind of, one final question. Um, I'd be very surprised if Non Clark comes back from this. Um, you know, everyone, everyone, you know, I, I believe everyone deserves second chances, all that kind of stuff, but I can't really see how he's going to come back from this. Um, Joss Whedon, I know he's still working, but how would you, would you go in and, well, would you watch stuff by these guys now that you you know these allegations, or would would you not? I well, so interestingly, I did watch the Nevers as a result, yeah. and it was really difficult to take that taint off what I was watching. I have the same experience actually, and uh, yep. uh, because. It's so strong, and it's got it's got some strong feminist messages in it, you know. Yeah. And you cannot help watching it, thinking, "Oh my god, you know, he's a hypocrite," you know. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. But and I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I've known very little about Joss Whedon. I don't, I haven't watched Buffy, The Avengers, Firefly, none of those. So I've never been someone that's gone out to go and watch Joss Whedon things like you have. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was at the back of my mind watching the Nevers, having read a few articles and gone, okay. So let, should we should we draw a line under that now and yep. talk about the Nevers? Let's talk about the Nevers. So I'll tell you what, let's have a clip and then we'll come back with some wonderful facts. It came three years ago. A power that mocks God. Those afflicted, how untouched. Mrs. True, Mr. Dare. Being touched is not a defect of character. Under this war, the cops, the purists. There's no shortage of people who hate us. Mrs. True and I, we've come to help with that. We don't want more violence. Gentlemen, might we be civil? Double, 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 double. Hello. Okay, so uh, Sky Atlantic, created and written by Joss Whedon. He directed three episodes, but wrote all 12. Uh, you have Laura Donnelly, who plays Amalia True. She was in Britannia, Outlander, Merlin, The Fall. And Skelly, who plays Penance, who's in Vikings. Olivia Williams as Lavinia. Uh, she's in the new Call My Agent UK. Uh, she plays Camilla Parker Bowles in The Crown. She's in Sixth Sense as well. James Norton as Hugo Swan. He's in Happy Valley, Grantchester, McMafia. Tom Riley as um, Augie Augustus, the, the brother of Olivia Williams. Um, turns out, just found out today, he comes from Maidstone, where I am. Went to the grammar school uh, here, uh, which is all very interesting. Um, uh, he was in the uh, Christine episode, the 12 Days of Christine in uh, Inside Number 9. Uh, then you have um, Amy Manson, very, very hammy uh, version of Malady that she plays. She was in Torchwood and uh, in Once Upon a Time. Ben Chaplin, who I like very much, uh, who plays Frank Mundy, the boxing legend and police inspector. He's in The Dig, Apple Tree Yard. Nick Frost is the Beggar King, Declan. Um, um, oh, yeah. 
he's also that guy Tom Riley who plays Augustus, the guy from Maidstone. He was also um, in Robin Hood. Uh, sorry, he was Robin Hood in Doctor Who. Ah, so um, um, Robot that, of Sherwood, I think that episode was called. Robin of Sherwood, that's <laughs> right. Palsy, I'm such a geek. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then you've got um, uh, Zach uh, Momo, who is uh, Dr. Cousin Horatio, who is the love interest. He was in Dr. Sleep. And then my mate, Heather Coombs, who has a very small role. She plays the anxious mother in one of the episodes. Brilliant. All right. So, wow. Um, so, um, had anyone, um, anyone seen this? I hadn't seen this before going in to watch it this time. Um, no. No? No I... one went in blind? No, my, blind. My, my, my last two recommendations, in fact, my only two recommendations so far, um, I haven't. Even, I, I kind of feel we should all start at the same point. Although maybe moving forward, I might actually check out and watch my programs first. Yeah, well, yeah I, I, I mentioned this to James actually offline. Um, if we watched a few episodes and go, this is good, this is worth investing our time in. It's not like um, with the movie Lighthouse. You, could, you just spend an hour and a half, two hours of your time, and it go. That's a rubbish film. Well, or that's a good film. I mean, I suppose we. This I, is I, a I, lot I, of a lot of time and effort for something. That yeah, well, let's not pull back the curtain too much. We'll talk. Because uh, uh, we'll talk about this later. But I agree with that. But I think probably the person who's choosing should go and check that they. Yeah. Think, if they think. It's yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's your responsibility. So Megan, it's your fault basically. Yeah. Well, um, look, I'll, I'll kick us off. I watched the first episode, and I really didn't like it. I really disliked it. There was a couple of things that really jarred for me. Um, I, I, the Joss Whedon thing didn't help, let's be honest, but it was trying to be really adult and sexy and swear words. And then they had a really stupid Batmobile car and like really daft contraptions. And it seemed like a, a, a show for kids and the adults. Um, and I thought it didn't know where it wanted to be in that However, after episode one, I very quickly kind of got sucked into it and, and I started enjoying it much more and more and more, but we'll get on to that. Um, Deborah, what are your first thoughts? I thought it was really messy. I just couldn't get through one episode without falling asleep. The last episode, episode six, was the only one that I didn't fall asleep through. Um, but I agree. I, I just I couldn't get on with it. It was all over the place. The threads were blowing in the breeze. It was a mess. I, I felt like there was no desire or capability to follow what the hell was going on. It was only until episode six that actually is this a bit too late now for us to for us to now understand that it's all coming together. Well, I think I, I think it got to episode three or four. And that was the moment where I had a bit of a shock where you had Hugo Swan doing uh, doing naughty naughty things in bed. Yes. And I was like, oh, oh, right. So it's this kind of programme. And that's where, uh, you know... And that's it. And I think, you know, did it want to be Game of Thrones or did it want to be the 16th what, band? Yeah. And, it, and, and, and as I got to the end of episode six, I just thought... Hold on. Well, it's let's, do, it's we, Doctor Who for, for Hold on. Let's, let's, let's do The regeneration thing. At the end. OK. Because I think that's worth talking about separately. Megan, what were your thoughts? Coming into it... My immediate... Well, so it's the sort of thing that... Typically, I would, I really would quite like. I wasn't just picking it because it was just Weezer. And it yeah, was I like Victorian. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, but I start immediately that first episode. It felt like it has was. Um, I don't know if any of you seen the Irregulars. So it had a yes. feel of the Irregulars. Yep, it I'd had a feel that. of Miss Peregrine's. Um, yeah. School, school for unusual for children, children or whatever. Well, it's got so yeah. many. Um, like, dreadful. The, the, a, bit, the... a bit of an Ola Holmes going on. And, Holmes, yeah. and it just felt really a bit of this and a bit of that and all stuck together and, and nothing truly original about it. And it it was kind of, I found it quite, um, just felt lots of sort of like gimmicky bits that, that to, to your point, Deborah, the, 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 it got very complex very quickly. Um, and I know we're going to sort of like move on and discuss it, but I just, my immediate reactions after the first couple of episodes were, I'm not feeling this is standing out. And it's got its own true thing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, yeah, the thing that put me off, there were so many um, things that I thought, well, it's just like that. It's just like that. It, I thought X, it was basically the X-Men in Victorian times, down to the point that, you, you know, you're kind of leader of the gang almost was a wheelchair bound a woman. And it's like, you know, they're, they're, all, they're all mutants, like X-Men mutants, you know. Mm. And it's like, you 
And there's, it's not just the X-Men. There's so many. Oh, suddenly so many. something weird has happened and a bunch of people have got some weird powers that they didn't have before. Oh, yeah. Oh dear, what's going to happen? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they had some hooks that kept you watching. Mm. Um, I think Penance and True... They've they've got the chemistry. They were like they're they're yes. anchors. I think um, they were the ones that sort of stood out and ca- kind of kept it going. But I mean everything else, the, it I, was just so complicated. And I just well, I wonder now we know a little bit more about kind of what was going on behind the scenes. It sounds like a very troubled production. To the yes. fact as well that it's I think it's supposed to be twelve episodes or. 13, ten. Wasn't it? ten. Well, I think they'd written ten, and then yeah. they only and they, they only went stop. with six. They, well, they had to. They paused for COVID. They are going to mm. do these other four they episodes. They say they are. No, yeah. they are. No, they are because I was asked to be in it again. Ah. So ah. they 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 are uh, they're in the middle of filming. Um, like because I think they called it uh, season one B. Mm. Oh than, yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. And um, but but just just to your point, James, uh, yeah. the disconnection between. They say around episode four or five, that's the lack of fluidity because they stopped filming mid-season because of COVID and they restarted again in September 2020. Right. Okay, well, that makes that, that does make some sense. Um, Michael, what did you think about the characters? Can I ask specifically, actually, about the, the villain? Um, what was her name? Malady. Malady. Hammy. See, I liked, I did like her. I liked her and I liked her, I liked her more when you got the backstory. I, I think, I think that was, there was a little bit of redemption in that, that whole piece. And, you know, and I would genuinely want to know a bit more about how that all came about because the, there's, that was a pretty extreme shift from when her and, um, um, is it Amalia? What's yeah. her name? Yeah. Okay, Amalia, true, yep. When they're together in the nut house, um, yeah. you know, it's, it, that, that was quite that? interesting. Not so really, I was, I, I don't think you're allowed to say that. <laughs> Having Victorian times. Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm in Victorian times. <laughs> it was. It was, it was essentially bedlam. Um, <laughs> I mean, that was my high point of the whole series, that, that yeah. backstory. This, this is this is the, a very very long lead up, and I think for something like this to have worked, they should have just given us the headlines at the beginning. This is this is kind of what we're aiming for. Then then they would have got us hooked in properly throughout the the, I went... the, the episode. The last the last episode was the best episode because it tied things up. But it should these things should have been revealed long before. Well, so I went back and re I, I I went back to rewatch episode one because I was just like, did they really signpost this? And there was a little part of me that was like, this has completely come out of the blue. Mm. And the very, very first episode in very first scene or whatever, there's some pointers to it with, with um, Amalia going into the water and yeah. Malady getting mm. hit with the whatever. But you... you there's the only way you're ever going to clock that is once you see what else has come, and it's just. I mean, I have to slightly disagree with you, and Deborah. Uh, when I got to that episode, episode six, I was quite. I think it had just come quite soon. I think episode five was the one where we had the flashback, where we heard about the, you know, the the woman who was a baker and she had a really hard life, and then, um, and, and then when it went into the future. And it's like, oh, I don't really want to invest in a whole load of new situations. I don't really like this sci-fi binge. I'm getting quite used to the Victorian storylines going on here. I don't want to be... Yeah, I that, don't that need a sci-fi explanation. Who for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I quite liked the idea that something happened. I didn't really need to know the explanation behind it. But it got a little bit sci-fi, and it's like, oh, now it's about time. A travel. little bit sci-fi. A little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the whole <laughs> stripe, stripe going off to regenerate herself down in, uh, and then, and then, uh, and obviously, uh, the real Amalia True is dead. She drowned, and she ended up becoming. Yeah, but... yeah. I, I, I actually on that. So with that episode, had there been, so I was starting to lose the will to live with it, well and truly. Um, but a big, I do think a big part of that was actually how I felt about Joss Whedon by this point. I was almost determined not to like it because of, like, you know, I felt betrayed by him. 
<laughs> ruined my oh. cult viewing of my uh, early No, it's self. safe. It's safe. What you've watched before is safe, Megan. Okay, you know, thank crystal you. Crystal box. But 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 this isn't because this is new stuff and yes, we all know what. So, so <laughs> I can I can have a problem with this one. Um, but actually, uh, uh, with the final episode, had that been a run of ten or twelve episodes, that probably would have been the point that I'm. I, I was sat there going, oh oh, jeez, this is a bit of a mind bend, uh, and I probably would have been a little bit more engaged to get back into it and say, right, okay, well let's weave your themes together all these threads that you've got flying all over the place yeah show that you can start pulling them back together and yeah. let's see yeah. let's see if you're worth yeah the six hours i've already invested yeah, yeah. i think that's a very good point and i, I wonder, think so too i wonder if they made some rush rush decision to make that episode there at episode six as a as a, a that mm. might have come towards the end of the right at the end of the 10 episodes maybe or yeah, I think I think, I think, I think they've it. now opened the way to make these next six episodes um, better. But do I want to continue watching it? Is uh, I don't know. Maybe no. I'm forced to. No, I would have done. So oh, maybe I'll pick it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would have. I would have done three weeks ago when I finished watching it. I would have carried on. Yeah, yeah. But now there's been a bit of time. I'm not sure. I probably will because it's only going to be another four hours or five hours of your life, isn't it? But let, can we just talk a little bit about effects? Because this is another thing for me that doesn't work. I've never been a fan of steampunk. I've never, I don't, I don't get it. I and I know this is divides opinion. People, lot, lot, you know, I know people love steampunk, but I don't mm. like the designs. It's ever since watching Wicked, Wicked Wild Wild West, I think, where they had all those silly inventions in, in the Wild West era with Will Smith. And it was like, you can't do that with steam. You know, it just but um, I don't mind a TARDIS. Oh, we're going way back, aren't we? This uh, yeah. this this well, deep deep rooted uh, issue that you've got with Steve. Yeah, really don't like Steve yeah, but they I, I don't they've never claimed that it's it's actually steam in no, but it the Nevers, did they? Because she they she do. can read energy, so it's it's not it's not all just no, but I mean, sorry, I mean the design is very steampunk. <laughs> the design, it? yeah, yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's Victorian steam. I don't mean they're using steam to power everything. <laughs> <laughs> See, I quite like it. I do like that style. Um, in uh, Stardust with the ship that goes up, the things like that, all that sort of stuff. I just love it with the the little spin on things. So, so yeah, it's I don't all part it. of the reason why I chose it. I, I mean, I enjoy I enjoy that. I, I again, there's a lot of parallels drawn with Penny Dreadful, right? And I and I watched, I think about half an hour of it and just turned it off Penny Dreadful because it was so dreadful for me um, and Laurie um, uh, but they say you know that the Nevers lifts from the manga and anime Tokyo ESP and Penny Dreadful lifts from Alan Moore um, you know League of Extraordinary well, Gentlemen. Everything, everything comes from something but it's when it's not got its original it's Feminist a... themes, how badly women are treated by the patriarchy but then you're right that's in everything, you're right I've, that's I've, everything. I've got a question so I'm, I'm all for Colourblind casting, I think, you know, it's a great move forward. Uh, doesn't bother me, and I think it yeah, works. Yeah, because, like, that's Bridgerton and things like that, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah and, it, and it worked in... Yeah. There was a, a recent uh, Charles Dickens adaptation of... Yep. Nicholas Nickleby or something? I don't know, but that went really well. However, and I don't, I don't know about this, so I'm asking you to, colourblind casting happened in this. However, Irish racism, it was really prevalent in, in one of the episodes. Can, can you have these two things so, in the same world? Do you yes, think? yes, and there were some throwaway lines actually, because you, um, Doctor Cousins, threw away a, a line about uh, the racism that he was receiving at the time, which was he said uh, he said about swimming back, uh, where he, you know I, I need right. to I need to swim back from where I came from, having landed here or something. So there were lots of little throwaway lines that suggested racism going on, but not just but you know. And then can you do that with colour blind casting though? But was it colour blind? It certainly wasn't. I think Bridgerton's colour blind mm. casting. I don't think right. this one was so much. I didn't take this as because I I definitely took the sense that that the doctor was dealing with yeah. A lot of prejudice and had he not been black he would have been in a very different place as a doctor and there were definite allusions to the fact that he was doing what he was doing because there wasn't much else open to him okay yeah. i think i suppose maybe 
it explained that a little more for, as it went down down the line, didn't it, with the Doctor, mm. I guess. Um, all right. That's all, that's all I've got, really. Before we do the Big Five, have you got anything else you want to say, you two? Uh, do I have anything else to say? Um, why was it called The Nevers? Apparently, uh, he explained, Joss Whedon explained, that at Comic-Con in 2018, the phrase was meant to evoke a reaction to their oddity, to what is considered unnatural. You should never be like this, or never exist, or never have existed. Right. So, The Big Five. OK. Big Five. So, I don't know what we'll spent too much time on these. But uh, performance of the series, who do you think, Sean? It wasn't Nick Frost for me, that's for sure. No. Uh, Laura Donnelly for me, who is the one that plays Amalia True. She's she's a yeah. good anchor. Yeah, yeah I, I thought she was... Ex actually, moving between the different characters that she played in, um, yeah, I thought she was good. Well, I'm going to give my nomination to Amy Madsen, who played Melody, because... I mean, it was a happy. It was like a bit of a musical theatre performance, but yeah. she was in Oliver, and I loved her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it reminded me of like I don't know, um, Helena Bonham Carter in you know Barbara the what is it called? Barbara of what was it? A Barbara Seville. Not the Barbara Seville. Todd. It's the Sweeney Todd one. The Barbara. Oh, yeah, the one. Demon, yeah. The, the demon Barbara of. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Sweeney Todd. Fleet Street. Fleet Street. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, oh, that, love, kind of, that, that kind of that kind of OT. Yeah, but it's just a little bit out of anyway. Yeah, fair a little enough. bit out of place. Um, Megan, set piece of the scene. I'm being mad. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me being mad. If you hadn't noticed, yeah. everybody. Ah, oh, you should put me I'm in a slightly stadium. unhinged. <laughs> I've got my, I've got eye makeup and everything. Yeah. Oh, I've, <laughs> and got a, a and a I've got and a dribble. I've got a dribble. I'm dribbling, and here's my nipple. I pull me skirt right up. Yeah, oh, smell oh, my me mouth. rotten ashes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, well, talking about that, so actually my <laughs> set piece is in the theatre, the theatre scene, when she does her mad bit. Yeah. Although, oh, you, like that? you wouldn't pick that, it makes no sense, because she doesn't want to kill her anyway. Um, no, but I thought it was quite a good little expose. Oh, it's practice. not like drew out quite... Uh, it shone a light on who the singing and the who the people yeah. were, who were the touched and... Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, that's quite interesting. Oh, I forgot about her. Um, and I, I, I forgot about her. I didn't even mention her in the credits at the beginning, I don't think. Um, yeah, Shoddy. She, Shoddy. She Try harder next time, please, Deborah. And then, um, <laughs> so, I suppose the reveal for me, maybe? Right. That's the set piece. OK. And for me, it was um, the Baker story, the story of her. Yeah. Was, that was really sad. Yeah. You know, yeah. not to choose those lovely cakes. I would, I'd have loved to have one of those cakes. I would have done too. Ah, so there you go. Um, all right, effect of the series. Uh, <sighs> costumes, the costumes, the corsets, they were all good. They looked I, good. You can't can get tell you what it wasn't. Victoria, though, can you, really? It I mean, wasn't the really tall girl. Oh, oh, yeah. No, that really didn't work, did it? <laughs> it really was no. terrible. Yeah. No. I mean... <laughs> You think we live in a world nowadays where we're at a point where things look so believable, but sometimes they just don't. Yeah, no, it's it, silly. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't stand. It didn't it, stand true. I mean, it, uh, it worked well for Harry Potter, but not here. Her, um, yeah, I think her character. I, I'm hoping her character does something in the last four episodes because she well, she hasn't really done much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I can't really. Nothing really sticks out for me. Um, I'm certainly not going to say that stupid little car. <laughs> really hate that car. Little car. <laughs> what about your man's fireballs? Mm. I, mean, mm. I did quite like when they were um, throwing. Was it the ice? And they were running up the oh, ice. Oh yeah, that was quite clever. Yeah, yeah. The rescue mission. All right. Yeah. Is that, um, did you choose one, Deborah? Uh, I just said quite like the costumes. Yeah. All right. Well, the stupid factor. Oh, oh it's just stupid. <laughs> I mean, look, I love a, I love a fantasy. I love Victorian. It could have been so much more. Maybe it will be. It's just messy themes, threads lost. Yeah. Do you think it, can, we can turn it around? A yes or a no for the resuscitation factor? I think everything's got potential. Yeah. They're filming now, so I think there is. I think yeah. there's potential. I'm yeah. going to stay optimistic. It's, I, think, I think it's a good cast. I think it's good cast and it's good premise. If I don't know how they're gonna, if they are gonna tw tw mix these worlds together, 
I do hope not. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Um, well, it's what is it? It's They're big fat whales, are they? Space whales? What is it? The Galanthi is just a big fat alien. That's, mm. there's a, there's, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, quite, I'm not quite sure what this war is about or why. I don't think we do. I think that's what happens when you stop a series after six episodes yeah. that we're supposed to run for more. Do you know what? I don't think I care either. I know. <laughs> but she could it, change history by being there. You know, Doctor Who-ish style. She regenerated. Yeah. Can't change history, not one line, said William Hartnell in the Aztecs. And then three stories later, they were changing history like wildfire. If I could start the destruction of everything that's evil here, then everything that is good would survive when Cortez lands. But you can't rewrite history, not one line. <laughs> so there you go. Um... Uh, we're so going to give it scores. I have thought here. Uh, I think there's a quote that I quite liked. Um, I heard an ugly rumour the other day. All rumours are ugly. No one whispers about virtues. I thought that was nice. Very true. I read was it that, badly. That was, that was, that was, uh, that was in it. the... Yeah. Oh. All right. Um, oh, and just a series link I've got here. At the end of episode five, I don't know if any of you noticed, but Malady goes, la, <laughs> like that. Oh, did she? Oh, did she? <laughs> I don't think I clocked that. Yeah. yeah. There we go. That made me smile. I've seen a few La t-shirts knocking around oh. on uh, people. <laughs> Not in person, uh, but on uh, social media and on telly. Uh, good stuff. All right, shall we cast? Uh, shall we mark this, maybe? So, um, storyline and plot. And Megan, as soon as uh, you're the one that embarked this joyous adventure on us. Well, I think I'm being quite generous and I'm giving it a five. Okay, Deborah? Four. It gets a four from me. Okay, characterization and performances. Deborah? Five. Um, I'm going to give it a seven. I thought I quite like performances in general. I'll give it a six. Okay. Um, just checking your writing. I just didn't like the character. Yeah? The performances were fine, the characters were not fine. Uh, all right, style. Oh, well, it loses some points for me because of the Victorian thing. But four for me, Megan? Five. Well, I gave it eight because I think it looks good. Okay, fair enough. Um, Costumes. I just love the Victorian. I just love the Victorians. <laughs> um, originality. Um, Deborah. Four. Two for me. I think it really. Three for me. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm being super generous. You are being very generous, I would say. But it's not like you, they're Deborah. your scores. <laughs> <laughs> um, absorption factor. Three for me. Three, four. Right. Ooh. <laughs> Let's add these up. 44.66% recurring. I'm thinking that's at the bottom of the list, isn't it? it uh, really is it? Is, is it lower than... Um... It's, yeah, it comes in the sixth place under the one. I have got three clues for the next um, series. And it is uh, what I've tried to do as well is kind of move as far away from... Um, from what we've just seen as possible. Um, Possibly so, wise. <laughs> so see if you can guess what it is. Okay, right. give us your clues. First clue. It's set in the 1970s. <laughs> Sorry. That clue number two. It's based on a true story. This might give it away. Clue number three. It's about a serial killer who uh, worked out of Thailand. Killing tourists. Oh, the what? serpent. Yes. What's out of where? Thailand. Yeah. So we are going to be watching the eight episode um, series called The Serpent. It was on iPlayer. It might still be on iPlayer, but it has definitely moved to Netflix. It was a joint I BBC um, Netflix production. Um, I saw it when it came out, but I have to say, big fan. Um, and um, it's lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. And it's based on a true story. So, oh, yeah, but, oh this yeah. is going to be awful. That's yeah, just why. This Your back I've... pocket's going to be overflowing. Oh, yeah, I know, but this is why I've avoided it because, um, because when it's a bit when it's based on something real, I, I, you know, I like living in a uh, under a shell, you know, where it's all made up, really, stuff, But real stuff is makes me feel a bit ill. Okay, well, all right, all right, all right then, guys. Well, um, let's not leave it so long till next time, eh? Yes, let's um, do this quickly. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care, everyone. Bye.